All right, guys, so we're going to do a little bit of a technical video on doing diagnostics on our harnesses, specifically with the 1UZ non VVTI and also the 1UZ VVTI, anything that comes with our fuse boxes. So let's get into it. Right, so usually with every harness that we do for a customer at the end, I will do how to read diagnostic codes and all of that type of stuff. What I realized is that I haven't done a video just for the diagnostics on its own uh, and going into a lot more detail than what I usually do on the videos themselves. So on all of our harnesses that we build with our fuse boxes um, for the 1UZ non-VVTi and the 1UZ VVTi, you'll see that we include the LED. That is basically your check engine light. In this particular setup, I've got an entire dash cluster and everything is well going with this. So if I put the ignition on, which I will do now. Okay. And you'll see straight away, we've got our check engine light there. We've got our LED on our fuse box coming on as well. So that's a check engine light there. All right, so to read the codes is very, very, very simple. In all our fuse boxes, you'll see there's an empty slot that's available there. And so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this out now and you're going to check the check engine light goes off and it starts flashing. So we've got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not going to go through them all, but that's two and seven. That's 27. So normally on these, you'd get 27, 29 and 71. So it's sub oxygen sensor bank one, sub oxygen sensor bank two and the um, EGR valve that's no longer then hooked up. All right, so there's nothing wrong with this engine. She completely starts and runs and I'm gonna start her now to show you that the check engine light goes off and everything is okay and we've got no more codes other than what we should have, okay? So, nice and simple. One, two, three. <laughs> So as you see when she's running we've got no check engine light on at all so everything is fine there's no limp mode in this one none of the codes are there everything is good so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna make a code and I'm gonna make a code by doing two things I'm gonna make sure make three codes so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna unplug the mass airflow sensor I'm also going to unplug the cam sensor at the front here so again So when you're disconnecting connectors, don't pull on the wires themselves. They all have little tabs on them. You can push them in and there. This is not an anchor point or a rope to pull a connector off of. Just bear that in mind. If you stop pulling wires out of connectors, they break, etc., etc. So now that I've disconnected those two items over there, what we're going to do now is we're going to put the ignition on and we're going to start her up. Okay. Right, so we've got no front cam sensor on the left bank plugged in and we've got no mass airflow sensor plugged in. So let's fire up now and you'll see that we get a check engine light when we're running. Right, so now you've seen we've got a check engine light. So I'm just going to put the ignition back on. I'm going to bridge that little terminal again inside the fuse box and we're going to count the codes again. So now we've got one, one, two, three, so that's 13. We've got one, two, one, two, three, four, that's 24. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's twenty-seven. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the last one is going to be one, two, three, and one. All right, so 24 intake air temperature sensor, 31 mass airflow sensor, 13, 
That's the issue with the cam sensor over there. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna plug everything back in again. Pull the ignition off. Put the mass airflow sensor back in again. All right, now we're gonna fire her up again. So we'll put the ignition on. Okay, let's go. Okay, so now we've got no check engine light at all because we plugged everything in so everything is working as exactly as it should. Now, this is the reason why we always tell the customers to connect the red wire to a permanent 12 volt supply is because basically what you're gonna see now is I'm gonna read the codes and code 13, 24, and 31 are still going to be there, okay? So again, I haven't done anything. We're just gonna bridge that over. And you'll see we've got one, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four. I'm not gonna go through the whole sequence, it's gonna take forever, but as you can see there, she has kept all of the code. So obviously this permanent supply is actually given to the ECU to allow her to store all her codes, okay? So it's gonna be very, very important because if you are trying to diagnose a fault and you have your check engine on light while she's running, the second you disconnect the ignition, if this was connected to an ignition source, you would reset the ECU, you would turn it on, go to check codes, and the codes would have disappeared. Okay, so that's super important. If you don't connect that to permanent 12 volts, you, every time you turn the key off, you're gonna lose all the codes, okay? And so that that is super important. And the other one is super important because you'll see the check engine light came on instantaneously the second that I started it when the MAF was unplugged. But I wanna show you something quickly, and what I'm gonna do is, now I'm just gonna disconnect the main power. Okay, literally for a second. You don't have to wait 10 minutes or anything like that. The second you disconnect it, that's gonna go off completely. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect this cam sensor and I'm gonna show you what happens. With some of these codes, it's not instantaneous. So watch. So I'm gonna quickly put the ignition back on now. So you can see there. And put the ignition back on. So now we're live. I'm gonna start her up and watch what happens. You'll see the check engine light goes off and then after a few seconds, she'll come back on again. See, so now if you had this particular fault and every time you kept resetting the ECU because that wasn't connected to permanent 12 volts, it would be almost impossible and very difficult to diagnose because you'd only be able to do it when the engine itself is running, which is perfectly fine. You can do that um, because obviously you do the diagnostic mode to check the timing, whether it's, it's a lock at a 10 degrees. So again, absolutely fine, but massive, massive pain to do that. What's also very nice is this thing will store any code that's cropped up from the moment you connect the battery to it, okay? So sometimes you may have a sudden fault or a small fault and it comes and it goes and the check engine light goes off and on or anything like that. Doesn't matter, it'll store that code. So in terms of diagnostic procedures, what I normally do is the first thing I will do is I will read all the codes. I'll read all of them, I'll write them all down on a sheet of paper. Then what I'll do is I'll disconnect the battery or pull out the plug or do we have to do to kill the power to the ECU. Then I'll put everything back in again, start the car up, go for a drive, halfway there, stop the car, start it up again, drive all the way back, park up, read the codes. See A, what codes have remained, and B, look at what you had on the old codes, and then obviously try and fix the problems that are the codes that are currently there. But also, if you're having difficulty diagnosing and the codes that are there are not really helping with your problem, looking at the old codes might be useful to see if there was something in the past that went wrong that might also point towards what the actual issue is, okay? So again, it's always nice to have that old bunch of codes before you start looking at the new codes and going from there. Another thing that's quite important is a lot of these ECUs are starting to fail, 
okay especially the non vbti ones and it looks like even the one you said vbti ones are starting to fail as well now on these ones in particular one of the symptoms that you can look for is a lack of diagnostic codes so if you have an issue where your engine let's say it's been running absolutely fine for like two years and all of a sudden out of the blue it starts giving you really weird problems you're not getting a check engine light you're trying to check codes and either it's consistently flashing uh, on the older ones to say that there are no codes or in this case you're not getting 27 29 71 or whatever that might be an indication that your ecu is damaged and the capacitors have leaked and then it is time for a repair what i would normally say in that particular case as well is make a fault make a fault so that the check engine light will come on and that you can read the codes so that's as simple as unplugging a MAF, unplugging a cam sensor at the front here. Uh, you can unplug a temperature sensor because that will give you code uh, 22 for the temperature sensor on there. So there's loads of things that are easy accessible that you can unplug where you can do it. So if you do have a suspicion that your ECU is damaged and the capacitors are leaked and um, because it's doing really, really weird issues, okay, that's always a good thing to check. Check that out. And that goes inside with obviously the stuff like the temperature sensor replace those when you're doing a swap because more than likely the one that you've got in this is from this engine this engine is from 1997 all right so that's an old temperature sensor clean out the math and replace it if it's giving you any dramas just make sure that that is from there so hopefully this has been super helpful um, I just wanted to make a video on its own rather than something that's part of a harness I wanted to be able to send this to both the customers and maybe help someone else out there uh, that, that's running into issues or whatever but that's how you read the diagnostic codes on our harnesses uh, if you have a standard vehicle um, if it's a 1UZ VBTI so an LS400 like 98 to 2000 you can literally just bridge the uh, pin 13 and pin 45 that's ground and TC that'll ground out TC to give you your trouble codes um, unfortunately to our American friends the late 97 ECUs actually moved over to OBD2 on these um, non-VVTI ECUs and obviously your 1UZ VVTI was definitely OBD2 compliant and for some weird reason on the American models this flashing check engine light uh, it doesn't work um, bridging TC does not make the check engine light flash and you cannot pull codes from that so European models both for the non-VVTI and the 1UZ VVTI and uh, Japanese models again for both the 1UZ and the uh, VVTI and the non-VVTI you can pull codes by doing this really nice and simple all of our customers do get a whole um, sheet with all the codes on there to explain exactly what the fault is when you go through it but as again you can always phone us up and ask us you're getting x and x code what is the problem again it's no issue we'll tell you exactly what it is but yeah so hopefully that's been helpful guys if you have any questions uh, please fire it down below uh, or you can message us on our facebook page and we'll get back to you as soon as we can and yeah thanks for watching guys and we'll see you again soon bye bye